Remote ID is here with the FAA's recent announcement that they're going to start enforcing remote ID rules. Now, this controversial rule wasn't rolled out very clean. Uh, despite having years to prepare for it, there's still a lot of people wondering, do I need remote ID? If I need it, how do I get it? So we're going to answer those questions in this video. Now, if you're unsure about remote ID because you don't yet have your Part 107 certificate and you want to get that Part 107 certificate so you can start making money with your drone, you can get 20% off our remote pilot test prep course by going to photocourses.link 107 and using the coupon code tube20 to get that 20% off. And it does cover all of the latest with remote ID. There are three steps to getting compliant with this remote ID thing. And the first step is to figure out if you even need remote ID. If you are a recreational flyer, so you're just flying for fun, you're not making any money off of these photos and no one else is either, and you are flying a drone that weighs 0.55 pounds or less, you don't need remote ID. You can fly anywhere where it's legal to fly without broadcasting remote ID. There's no need to watch any further in this video. However, if you are flying under the Part 107 rules, so someone's making money off of these photos uh, and or video, or you're flying recreationally, a drone that weighs greater than 0.55 pounds, which are gonna be your Mavics and your Phantoms and so on, then, you do need to broadcast remote ID while you're flying. So once you've figured that out, the next step is to figure out if your drone is already remote ID compliant. If it has the hardware and the software to broadcast what you need to broadcast to be legal. Now, in order to figure that out, you're going to need to go to the FAA's declaration of compliance list, which I'll have linked in the comments here, filter out the results by searching for the RID, Remote ID Declaration of Compliance, and then type your manufacturer or your model into that search bar. And if it shows that your drone has been accepted, it is already equipped with Remote ID. You're just gonna have to make sure that your firmware is up to date so that your drone is indeed broadcasting the required signals to be compliant with remote ID. And with all the different drones out there, different models, manufacturers, you're just gonna have to check for your specific model to figure out if your firmware is up to date and where you can go in the controller or the drone settings to find all of that information. If you do not see your drone on that list or it's not accepted, it is not equipped with remote ID. It has not yet been approved. Most of you flying older drones, like from DJI or Autel, will need a standalone module that you can attach to your drone with heavy-duty Velcro, and that has a GPS receiver, a rechargeable battery, and a radio transmitter that'll transmit either Bluetooth or Wi-Fi that required information. Now, I'll have a list in the comments here of some of the more common standalone modules. There are quite a few out there, and there are more that are getting approved every single day. So again, if you have heard of one that's not on that list and you wanna see if it's been approved by the FAA, you need to go back to that declaration of compliance list and then search for that manufacturer and that model of the remote ID and see if that broadcast module has been accepted. These things are around a hundred bucks. I don't have any experience with them, so I can't speak firsthand about their effectiveness. If any of you have used them and you have any other suggestions, please let us know in the comments your experiences with these standalone modules. So that was the second step. The first step, we determined whether or not we even need remote ID. The second step was to figure out if our drone is already equipped with remote ID or if we need an aftermarket broadcast module. The third and final step is to just update your registration so that it reflects that you are operating either a drone with remote ID built in, standard remote ID, or an aftermarket broadcast module. 
So to do all that, you're gonna to need to go to the FAA drone zone, also linked in the video description here, and go to your drone inventory. If you've already registered your drone and it has remote ID, all you need to do is click on the three dots to edit that information, ensuring that you have checked yes, that that drone does broadcast remote ID, and then enter that remote ID serial number. That's mostly going to be your drone's serial number. So it should already be there if you registered. However, if you're getting an invalid registration number, that's because the serial number is not in the correct format. If you go back to that declaration of compliance list, you'll note that a lot of these have a different format for the serial number. Your drone serial number may be 14 digits, but the declaration of compliance serial number range is 20 digits. This is the Mavic Air 2S, for example. You see the registration starts with 3YT. However, the remote ID serial number range starts with 1581F, and then it ends with another digit. So that's six extra digits that you're going to have to add to your serial number. Five in front, one in the back. Is there an easier way to do this? Yeah, if you go to your drone's remote controller to the remote ID menu page, it'll show what that format should look like. So you just enter that directly from what you see on the screen there. Again, make sure that it starts in the proper format from what is on the declaration of compliance list and that invalid serial number error message should go away. If you need to use an aftermarket broadcast module, you will need to add that as a separate device. So in that drone zone dashboard, go to add device, choose broadcast module, and then enter that module's information. The serial number for that should be provided to you by the manufacturer. So those are the three steps to make sure that you are complying with remote ID. For those of you with somewhat newer drones, it's pretty easy. You figure out whether or not you need remote ID, you look it up in the declaration of compliance list, just to make sure that it's in there, and then you make sure your registration information is up to date. Otherwise, you have to add an aftermarket broadcast module purchased separately. And that's really all there is to it. It may seem very complex, but once you break it down this way, uh, you know, it's easy to understand and it's easy to figure out if you do need that. Now, if you don't do any of that, if you do need remote ID, but your drone isn't compliant, or you don't have a broadcast module, as of now, the only places that you can fly in are in FAA recognized identification areas, abbreviated as FRIAs. So these are areas set aside by the FAA for drone pilots with larger drones to fly without broadcasting remote ID. If you go to the FAA's ArcGIS website, which I will also link in the video description here. You can turn on the FRIA layer for where you live and see if there are any FRIAs nearby where you can go fly. Unfortunately, that's where you will be limited to flying if you're not broadcasting remote ID. The FAA has been preparing us for remote ID for years. I know it's been controversial. It's been confusing, myself included. But there's really no excuse if you are caught flying without remote ID, just because it has been everywhere for so long. So make sure you're compliant just so you don't get in trouble. If you have any other questions about getting compliant or comments about any of these aftermarket broadcast modules, let us know in the comments here. Let's keep it civil. I know this is a controversial topic and a lot of you are just gonna write in about how dumb this rule is and how much you hate it. All of those comments are gonna be removed, okay? I wanna make sure that it's a helpful discussion for those pilots who do want to make sure that they're following the rules. So safe flying and we'll see you in the next video.